In this example, we have a mass, M subscript C, that's suspended on a cable, and that cable goes over a pulley. Now for this scenario, we're going to be winding the cable onto the pulley in order to lift the mass. And then we're going to release the mass, and after it's fallen a distance of 6.5 meters, we want to determine the linear velocity of the mass, written here as V subscript C, but we also want to determine the angular velocity of the pulley, written here as omega p. So once again we have a conservation of energy question, but what we need to be careful of is which components have linear kinetic energy and which components have angular kinetic energy. So the way that we put energy into this system is by rotating the pulley and winding on the cable in order to lift the mass. Now when we lift the mass and hold it at its top position, we've given the mass, mc, gravitational potential energy. So the energy that we input into this system is being given to mc, the mass of the counterweight. Now when we release the mass, the mass is travelling directly downwards. Therefore, the mass is going to gain linear kinetic energy. So we have kinetic energy, linear. But the other thing that we need to take account of is the fact that the pulley is going to be rotating. As the pulley rotates, it gains angular kinetic energy. So here we have potential energy being converted to two forms of kinetic energy, linear kinetic energy of the counterweight and angular kinetic energy of the pulley. So as we go through this process, we have to be careful whether we're referring to the mass of the pulley or the mass of the counterweight. So let's begin with our potential energy. Potential energy is mass times gravity times height. But the mass that's being lifted is the counterweight. So the potential energy that's input into the system is m subscript c times gravity times height. Now we also mentioned that the linear kinetic energy is being gained by the mass. So we have our formula for linear kinetic energy is a half mv squared. But once again, it's the counterweight that's gaining kinetic energy. Next we have our angular kinetic energy, which is a half i omega squared. But here it's the moment of inertia of the pulley that we're interested in. And that will give us the angular kinetic energy of the pulley. So the other thing that's worth mentioning here, the linear velocity of the counterweight here is also going to be the linear velocity at the outside of the pulley. And I'll explain what I mean over on our diagram. If the mass is traveling downwards with velocity v, then this point on the outside of the pulley is also traveling downwards with velocity v. Therefore, the linear velocity of the counterweight as it drops is also the tangential linear velocity at this point here. It would also be the linear velocity of this point here, but its direction would be different. Its direction would always be at a tangent. But the linear velocity of the mass is also the linear velocity at the outside of the pulley. OK, in this example, I'm going to calculate the inertia of the pulley first of all. So the inertia of the pulley, again, the formula for inertia for a solid cylinder is a half mr squared. Now because it's the inertia of the pulley, we need to remember to use the mass of the pulley and the radius of the pulley. Therefore the moment of inertia for the pulley is a half times 22.5 times our radius which is given 0.12 squared. Therefore the inertia of the pulley equals 0 0.162 kilogram meter squared. And that's the full complete answer. There's no additional decimals on that answer. So I'm going to add my inertia over on the left hand side to create some space. We have IP equals 0 0.162 kilogram meter squared. 
OK, so coming back to our original equation, we know the mass of the counterweight is 85 kilograms. We know gravity, which is a constant of 9.81. And we know the height of the counterweight begins as 6.5 meters. Moving to our right hand side, we have a half, which is a constant. We know the mass of the counterweight. We don't yet know the linear velocity of the counterweight after it's fallen 6.5 meters. And moving on to our next term, a half is a constant. We've just calculated IP, but we don't yet know the angular velocity after the mass has fallen. So we have two unknowns. With two unknowns, we need a second equation. And the second equation we're going to use is the equation V equals R omega. And we can rearrange that because omega equals V over R. Now we have a choice here. We can either replace V here with R omega, or we can replace omega here with V over R. My preference here is to replace V with R omega. And so replacing V with R omega, we'll get the following. We get the mass of the counterweight times gravity times height equals a half times the mass of the counterweight r omega squared plus a half ip omega squared. So now we only have one unknown and that's omega. I'm going to rewrite this slightly. We have the mass of the counterweight times gravity times height equals a half times the mass of the counterweight. And instead of r omega all squared, I'm going to multiply out the bracket, giving me r squared omega squared plus a half ip omega squared. Now, instead of continuing with the derivation, what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute my values in and simplify this equation slightly. So mcgh on the left hand side is 85 times 9.81 times my height of 6.5 equals a half times my mass of 85 times r squared. Now although the formula there has a lowercase r, the r that we're referring to is the radius of the pulley. So 0 0.12 squared, and it's going to be all of that times omega squared, and then plus a half IP omega squared. We have a half. We know IP is 0 0.162, and it's all of that times omega squared, like so. So I'm going to multiply that out and simplify, so I'll get... 5420.025 equals, now I'm going to multiply out this bracket here. So I have a half times 85 times 0 0.12 squared, which equals 0 0.612 omega squared. And then I'm going to multiply out this bracket. So we've got a half i or a half times 0 0.162, which is 0 0.081, lots of omega squared. And now what I can do is collect like terms. So I have 5420.025 equals 0 0.612 plus 0 0.081, lots of omega squared. All I'm doing is collecting all of the omega squareds together. I have 5420.025 equals 0 0.693 omega squared. So now, in order to get omega on its own, I need to divide each side by 0 0.693, and then square root. So I get omega equals the square root of 5420.025 divided by 
0 0.693, giving me a value of omega equal to 88.44 rads per second. So that's the angular velocity of our pulley. Now finally, we can work out the linear velocity of our mass. And the way that we do that is by returning to our formula v equals r omega. So we have v equals r omega. Now just as a reminder, the r there is the radius of the pulley. So in actual fact, we should write v equals rp omega p. So we have 0 0.12 times 88.44, giving us a linear velocity of the mass equal to 10.61 meters per second. So once again, we've seen an example of where we can use the conservation of energy, and we have potential energy being converted to both linear kinetic energy and angular kinetic energy. The big difference here is that we have to take care with our masses and our moments of inertia and so on, because it's the counterweight mass that we give potential energy to, it's the counterweight mass that gains linear kinetic energy, but it's our pulley that gains the angular kinetic energy.